Hey guys, in this video we are taking a look at the Zima board, the world's first hackable single board server. With this board we can create some really interesting projects which I will discuss in the video. So let's get started. The Zima board comes in this box packaging. First of all we got a letter from the founder of the Zima board. Next we have the 12 volt power brick and the Zima board itself. So let's unbox it. Inside the box there is another box, if we open it up we can see a quick start guide. And finally the Zima board. It feels quite heavy in hand and has this dedicated PCI slot. Last but not least we have the SATA cable for connecting SATA devices and these stickers as well. So that's pretty much what we got here. Talking about the specs, it comes in three different variants. I have got the Zima board 832 and this one has Intel Celeron N3450 4 core processor with a boost clock up to 2.2 GHz. Regarding the RAM and storage, we have 8 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM and 32 gigs of storage. For the graphics, we have integrated Intel HD graphics, nothing special here. That's pretty much about the specs. If you wanna know more about it, you can pause this video and read this document. Talking about the build quality, the top part is completely made of metal and serves as a big passive heatsink, which is plenty for cooling all the inner chipsets. The bottom part is covered with a black acrylic. On the front, we have a mini HDMI port, 2GB LAN ports, 2 USB 3.0 ports, and the power input. Turning around the back, we have two SATA ports and another port in the middle to power the SATA devices. And then we have a dedicated PCIe X4 slot, where you can attach a lot of modules that they provide on their website to create different kind of projects. So now let's power it up and see if we can use it as a single board computer. As you can see, I have set up this up with my full HD monitor. The Zima board comes with a pre-installed OS called Casa OS, which is based on Debian 11. However, it has x86 chipset, so you can install Windows or Android if you want to. Talking about the Casa OS, it runs really smooth. Browsing the internet or watching videos on YouTube, this device can handle it easily. Zima board advertised this board as a single board server but you can use it as a mini PC if you want to. Now let's try to create a home or office server with this thing. In order to do that you will need a Zima board, a SATA cable and a 2.5 inches hard drive or SSD. Now we have to connect this hard drive with the Zima board like this. You can stick hard drive at the bottom with the double sided tape or however you like. I wanna give it a more neater look so I designed this case specifically for this project and then I printed it on my 3D printer. So now you can add up to two hard drives inside this case and we can mount this case at the bottom of the Zima board. First we have to remove the back plate. After removing it, you can install the case like this. Now it looks much better. After connecting it with the power and ethernet, you need a desktop or a laptop to create the server. Now open the browser and go to casaos.local. Now you can use the Zima board through your computer. Make sure your PC and Zima board are connected to the same network, otherwise it's not gonna work. Here we have a very simple interface, you can see CPU and RAM usage among other things. This is the app store where you can install various apps for your projects like Pi-hole for blocking all ads from your network. Nextcloud for creating your own cloud storage, Jellyfin and much more. Since we are making a home server so we don't need any app right now. First of all we have to create the partition. 
I actually replaced the 480 gigs drive with the 1 terabyte drive because I needed a little extra storage. Now click on create storage, then format and create. It will format the hard drive so make sure to back up your data if you have any. Now here we can see we have 1 TB of storage. After completing this process, go to the file manager, storage 1 and create a folder. You can name it whatever you like. After creating the folder, right click on it and select stop sharing. Then right click again and choose share. Now a window will pop up and we have to copy this address. Since I'm using Windows, I will copy the first one. Now back to your PC, go to the my computer or this PC and create a network location. Here we have to paste the address that we copied earlier. And that's it, your very own mini home server is ready. Now you can store data or files here and access them from any home computer or laptop. You just need to create network location on all your devices. I have three devices and I can transfer data easily between them because they are all connected with the same network. And I can store one TB of data in this server. You can also create a cloud server like Google Drive with this thing which we will cover in some other video. I really love this little device, you can create a lot of interesting project with it. I will provide the link for the demo board in the description so make sure to check it out. That's pretty much for today, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts on this device in comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.